uh, commissioned the Presidential Vaccine Manufacturing Committee with the task of developing a comprehensive action plan and a strategy for local vaccine production in Ghana to meet the vaccine needs of the country and the sub-region. Now, pursuant to its core mandate, the Presidential Vaccine Manufacturing Committee has developed a draft roadmap and strategy to enable local vaccine production. The committee is also just uh, returned from uh, a technical visit to some parts of Europe and has fed into their roadmap some lessons from this visit. I want to introduce Dr. Insiasari, who is the president's advisor on health and has been instrumental in Ghana's um, COVID response program uh, to make a few remarks and to introduce other members of the committee uh, as we start off by taking um, the roadmap as well. So Dr. Nsiasari, um, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I will take your remarks at this point. May I also just introduce myself properly to everybody on the platform. My name is Kujo Oponkroma, uh, Minister Responsible for Information of the Republic. Doc. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. I'm going to introduce the members of the Vaccine Manufacturing Committee formed by His Excellency the President. The membership is made up of representation from the Minister of Health other and other relevant ministries and agencies. I'll first introduce uh, Dr. Mrs. Marta Jansa Lutron. He is representing the Minister of Health. Professor Alex Dodu represents He's the Director General of Ghana Standard Authority, representing the Ghana Standard Authority. Mrs. Delis Mimidako, the Chief Executive of Food and Drugs Authority, representing Food and Drugs Authority. We have a representative from also the Ghana Institute, uh, Ghana Association of Ghana Industries, who is a member. Is, is, is being it was first represented by the President, who is not represented again now, is the Chief Executive of the Ghana Association of Ghana Industries, who is also a member. We have Dr. Kwame Amponsa Chiano, the Program Manager of Spandex Program on Immunization, Ghana Health Service, representing Ghana Health Service as a member. Dr. Daniel Achel, also representing the Minister of Env Environment, Science and Technology as a member. Doc Mr. Mustafa Teruya Kuma, representing the Minister of Trade and Industry. Mrs. Yvonne Odele Kwansa, representing the Minister of Finance. And then we have Professor William Ampofo, who is the Secretary to the Committee. He is Associate Professor in Virology. And we have Dr. Anafi Asamwabam, the Coordinator of National COVID-19 Task Force, who is also a member. And Professor and myself, Dr. Anthony Siasari, also representing the Office of the President as a member. And we have as our press, our chairman, Professor Kwabran from Fon Boateng, former Minister of Science and Technology and, 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 and Innovation, who is the chairperson of the committee. So ladies and gentlemen, these are the members of the Vaccine Manufacturing Committee. And we have Ms. Mrs. Charlotte Eurajwa Akuamwa, who is the administrator to the committee. So Mr. Minister, these are the members of the Vaccine Manufacturing Committee, formed by His Excellency the President. Thank you. Um, my understanding is that uh, Professor Kwabna Frimpong Boating, the chair, is joining us virtually and will make some remarks. So, Prof, if you can hear me, um, we will take your remarks at this point. Uh, first of all, let me also commend our, some of our partners, TIZ, WHO, uh, the German Ministry for International Cooperation, and, 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 the, and the others. Um, so we are very excited that our partners have come to participate in this meeting, especially to ask questions and enrich our roadmap. This is very important. So uh, already we received some questions, which I think are very interesting. And uh, my 
colleagues at the meeting will provide answers to some of them. Some people are worried about the cost of power um, in, in Ghana, uh, cost of power to industry, access to financing, and intellectual property rights, uh, markets in Ghana, and in ECOWAS sub-region and also beyond. So we'll also be tackling issues like technology transfer and access to bulk vaccines for production and financial partnership, as well as R&D. So um, we believe that when we discuss these issues, our roadmap will be enriched and um, we'll be able to present a solid program to partners uh, who want to partner us in financially and also in terms of technology transfer. So on this note, let me thank you, uh, Minister, for also uh, accepting to moderate this meeting. And I wish my colleagues on the meeting very well. I would have wished to be there personally, but um, I'm sitting here sipping some hot drinks um, because I uh, have a little bit of cough. So thank you very much and God bless us all. Thank you very much, um, Professor Kwabna from Boateng, who is the chair of the President's uh, Vaccine uh, Committee. Out of the abundance of um, caution, you are sitting uh, at home uh, sipping some warm drinks, as you mentioned. I, I want to uh, come back to the uh, meeting room here where uh, in-person guests have uh, gathered. Uh, I know that our colleagues from uh, the German Embassy and GIZ Ghana who are supporting us are here. I would introduce some of them uh, shortly to make some remarks. But at this point, I also want to mention that this meeting, though virtual, is also being carried live on uh, the national broadcaster, um, Ghana Television, uh, so that uh, for the millions of uh, Ghanaians and other interested persons, they can also follow and uh, share with us the kind of comments that we believe will help in the enrichment of um, the roadmap. So what is this roadmap? What does this say? Does it have timelines? Does it have cost considerations? I want to invite um, the secretary to the Presidential Vaccine Committee, uh, Professor William Ampofo, uh, to outline for us as much as can be outlined at this point in time of our roadmap. After that, what I'll do is that we will then uh, take comments uh, and remarks from other stakeholders. It's not exactly a question and answer segment but it is to get a lot of comments and remarks. Maybe if there are questions that we can clarify, we'll be happy to clarify. The purpose is to engage and to work towards enriching uh, the roadmap for Ghana's local production of vaccines. So, uh, for example, for we are in your hands. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Kujo. I, I'm very, very proud that um, we are here at this stage today. Um, some of us have been advocating for vaccine manufacturing on our continent for a couple of years. And it is very gratifying that our own president has seen uh, the wisdom in putting this committee together to take us forward to actually be able to manufacture vaccines in Ghana. And I think this is a big milestone, really big milestone. I think we need a big round of applause. So my task is very simple today. I will take you through what forms the skeleton of the roadmap that we have put together. And to start with, we know that vaccines have revolutionized our ability to improve health and save lives, as we can see from the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. We will be able to control, and in some cases, we have actually eliminated pathogens, case in point, smallpox. And we know that many life-threatening diseases can be managed by the use of vaccines. However, the path to the development of a vaccine is complex and lengthy, and it can take up to 15 years for this to happen. Do we have the slides uh, being projected, please? Okay. Now, when we look specifically at vaccine research, development, and manufacturing, we know that the vaccine supply chains are global, and no one country can produce all the inputs required to manufacture a particular vaccine. Actually, it's documented that over 280 separate inputs are required for biological materials to grow a vaccine, and if you go through the technical kits required, it's not an easy process to get a final finished product. 
we know that the production of the vaccine requires a strong set, highly skilled personnel who will manage this complicated biological process. And such people are in short supply in Africa and even in our country, Ghana. And this is something that we have recognized. We, we have understood that a typical vaccine roadmap starts with two to five years exploratory. If you take clinical trials, that could take you another two years to determine whether these, this vaccine is safe. And then you need to do more work to find out if the vaccine is efficacious. So you do clinical trials, and we have phase one, phase two, phase three. And my colleague next to me, Mimi Dak, who is a specialist in this, it can take you up to 10 years to go through the phase one, phase two, phase three, when you are developing a new vaccine. Then you have to get regulatory approval. You have to license this product. After you've done that, then you actually have to produce a large quantity. So it's called scaling up. And this process has to be consistent. You cannot change anything because you want to make the same biological molecule in several million doses. And it comes with quality control. There must be continuous performance review. And you must also have post-marketing in place to ensure that the product is continuing to be safe and efficacious. So a typical vaccine development roadmap is very, very complicated. If we take even the sketch that you see on the screen, that shows you a simple microscope. You have an antigen. You have to be able to carry it into the human body. We use an adjuvant for that. You need to be able to preserve and stabilize this vaccine. And um, there are various chemicals that sometimes are added. And even we even add what we call some diluents or fluids to put all this together into a vial that we then inoculate. At the end of this, we then have a vaccine. So what I've described to you is shown in this sketch here, showing you the entire process from if you take a pathogen, be it a bacteria, particle, or a virus, going through the whole process of growing it, harvesting, purifying, and then inactivating the molecule. Then you have to then scale up. You have to purify. It, it shows you, this, this sketch for me just shows you the scale of the task that we are starting in Ghana. But we are confident that um, we will be able to, um, within six to 36 months, when you take you know, bulk, that you'll be able to come up with a finished product. However, we must understand that 70% of the time involved in manufacturing is actually dedicated to quality control. And you will understand by the end of this talk that the regulatory process is key to the production of a vaccine which will be acceptable, which is safe, and meet all the necessary standards that we will use to protect our people. I'm very happy to mention at this stage that we have come this far with major partnerships. Um, GIZ uh, actually in country has received tremendous support from the government of the German government, and we are very grateful for this. We've also had um, some you know, partnerships with, with some foreign companies, namely Merck, Romilag, and Glatt. And we are very happy that uh, despite the absence of you know, formal agreements, these discussions have enabled us to understand what will be the technical input, the scale of equipment, the timelines as we move forward in our vaccine manufacturing roadmap. The next slide then shows you what we are here for. We have come up with a simple vision. We have come up with a simple vision. We want Ghana to become self-sufficient in the production of vaccines, and we want this to meet our national needs and also, if possible, supply our fellow neighbors in the, in the sub-region. In the, in, in sub How are we going to do this? First of all, we are going to establish local manufacturing plants. These domestic manufacturing plants will be private sector-led. Government will simply facilitate the establishment of these uh, private uh, factories. And of course, if the products meet the quality standards, then they will be procured and used in our country, and of course, exported as well. In order to have a fully self-sufficient process, we must strengthen our research, discovery, and development in Ghana. And we have done um, a thorough analysis of our research institutions. We've done some work with academia. 
and we are very confident that we have the capacity to take this forward. All this will mean nothing if we do not have a strong regulator. And we are very proud of our FDA. Some of you may have heard the Director General of the World Health Organization praising Ghana's FDA, which is at WHO maturity level three, and is almost about to hit level four for some of the other items that it deals with. So one strong strategy that we have in our roadmap is to ensure that Ghana's FDA can do lot release of vaccines made in Ghana. And we are very confident that we have the tools, we have the capacity, and uh, Mrs. Mimidaku sitting beside me is not, is not here by chance. Um, we are very confident that, sorry, can you go back one slide? We are very confident that once the FDA is strengthened, we'll be in a position to have uh, vaccines that meet the regulatory standards uh, worldwide, global, and also for Africa. How are we going to do all this? You've heard from the presidential advisor that the fulcrum, the platform for all this will be a national secretariat. The National Vaccine Institute will simply coordinate all the efforts to produce vaccines in Ghana, all the research and development that will be required, work with FDA with the regulatory uh, control required, and enable the development and manufacture of vaccines in Ghana. This institute will not make vaccines. This institute will be a one-stop shop where anything to do with vaccine manufacturing will be discussed and facilitated and resourced. Next slide, please. So, to elaborate on some of the strategies, we've already mentioned the very critical partnerships to be required. One big question that we ask is, where is the money going to come from? And that's why our involvement is very important today. We are looking for partnerships to provide the funding. We're very happy that the German government has stepped up already. And most of the things we are doing currently are supported by the German government in partnership with the government of Ghana. We understand that clinical trials are very important. And when we are trying to access bulk or even products that have been licensed in other countries, and we know that technology transfer for even that will form the basis for pill finish is also a very, very critical negotiation. Intellectual property will be alongside all this. And what has come to be very famous is the offtake mechanism, the government assurance or guarantee to the private sector that products that meet the quality standards will be up and procured and used in Ghana. All this will not be possible if we do not build the human resource base that is required for vaccine research and even for manufacture itself. And we therefore need to identify young biotechnologists, you know, set up a program which will bring back home experts in the diaspora, people with the technical know-how, people with the financial acumen, those who know the market, who will help us to be able to develop and manufacture in Ghana. And all this, as I've already said, will be coordinated by the National Vaccine Institute. And we have several models in Ghana which are already working. My very good friend in the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, GIPC, has worked closely with GIZ, for the discussions that have brought us this far. And we think that the National Vaccine Institute will work like that to coordinate vaccine development and manufacture in Ghana. Now, what are the timelines that we have set out for this? you see this in the next uh, couple of slides. But before we get there, some of the situation analysis that we've done. My own University of Ghana, the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research. I've worked there for several years. And we do have the capacity. I can tell you that yesterday I gave a talk, and I even told people about how we are, we've been able to isolate the SARS-CoV-2 virus. We have been able to identify the Delta strain, and we are working with this strain. And you know that this is a critical ingredient when you are going to talk about vaccine development, and even for the post-market surveillance to determine whether the vaccines are effective or not. So this small step shows us that we do have the capacity within the facilities in Ghana, the Infectious Disease Center, to be able to uh, do the research that is required to move vaccine uh, forward. Um, colleagues in the media, and most of us have also heard about the ability of the West African Center for Cell Biology to, to determine the genomic sequence of the strains that are circulating in Ghana. Other in institutions have also come forward with proposals, and we are very happy that these form the documentation that shows us that we're on the right path to the establishment of vaccine research and development in Ghana. Whilst the committee has been working, we've received various proposals from Ghanaian uh, institutions and agencies, and these have been very, very positive, showing the interest and level of um, activity within Ghana to set up vaccine manufacturing in Ghana. We have a new company uh, called DEK Vaccines, 
We also have Atlantic Life Sciences. We also have uh, Phytorica, just to mention a few, who have come forward with concrete, solid proposals seeking to establish vaccine manufacturing in Ghana. Now, I would like to remind some of you that the Ministry of Food and Agriculture has actually a history of making animal vaccines in Ghana. So when we talk about vaccine manufacturing in Ghana, this is not new. We actually have the experience and the history that way back in Pong Tamale, vaccines were made that were enabled us to, to manage and control some of the animal diseases. We also have a proposal from the Council for Scientific Research that is looking at vaccine uh, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, for, 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 for our country. And all these have gone into the, all these have gone into the background analysis uh, for the roadmap that we are discussing today. Um, the University of Ghana has even provided an overview together with the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. And uh, we are very happy that with these proposals, the committee now has at least sufficient information to advise cabinet and the presidency about the cost estimates required for research and development to support vaccine manufacturing in Ghana. Now, some Foreign companies have also expressed strong interest to partner with our local companies. And uh, we just mentioned a few of them, Merck, Apigec, Romilac, Biopharmax. We also have the Pharmaceutical Sciences Group in the US. We also have Biomedical Labs, Amorphical Biotech, Bell Farm, IDT Biological, and most recently, India Africa Trade Council. And uh, we have even received in the past couple of weeks, you know, a lot more proposals and the committee still has a lot of work to do to examine these proposals and advise government accordingly. Now the next slide will show you the milestones that we have set. In order for the framework to move forward, we have to set some targets. And the short-term target for the first two years, we envisage the establishment of at least one domestic vaccine manufacturing plant for COVID-19, which is our immediate focus. And we hope that this will only be possible if this company is able to come up with a vaccine that meets WHO good manufacturing process. And of course, such a vaccine would have to be released by the FDA, which would have attained the necessary regulatory capacity uh, to do this within the next two years. We will also expect that um, at least three of our academic research institutions would have established functional R&D programs for vaccines, and some of them are on the track to do this. We think that for any of this to happen, we will need to have at least two financial partnerships funding mechanisms in place. And I should mention that a big step has, has been taken already with the allocation of $25 million by the government of Ghana, and this was approved by a parliament in the previous uh, financial uh, plan that was presented by the Minister of Finance. So we are on track with funding to move forward with some of the short-term targets that we have set up. For vaccines to be made in Ghana, we will require technology uh, transfer a partnership, and at least one of them should be set up uh, within the uh, first uh, two years. I think you're going too fast, so can you slow down and move in the slides, please? The other thing that we must have, which is very important, is to have the establishment of training programs for human resource required to feed our private factories and also for our R&D. And this is a very critical step that we have already started discussions, and we're hoping to identify, you know, graduates who just returned home or those who will be taking courses to ensure that these are uh, within the area of, of biotechnology relevant for vaccine manufacturing and development in Ghana. Now, when we move to the short term, from the short term to the medium term, we have a time frame of five years for this, and we have simply looked at what would be our needs, therefore, in five years. Next slide. So looking at what we have in our expanded program of immunization, looking at what we have with regards to pandemic vaccines, we think that we should have at least three domestic plants uh, that meet WHO good manufacturing you know, standards. And um, it's up to the private sector to, to show us that this is possible and government will provide the neighboring environment and the FDA will ensure that because they will be at WHO maturity level four, this will be uh, possible. We will have, you know, um, R&D programs that include clinical trials emanating from the research in the academic institutions, 
and we think that at least there will be five clinic, such clinical trials ongoing in the next five years. There are a couple that are actually underway now, so this is not, you know, an illusionary target. We know that there are COVID-19 vaccine trials that are ongoing in Ghana now, and the FDA is working closely with the academic institutions and the Ghana Health Service on these clinical trials. My own institution is working on a Lassa fever trial because we have Lassa fever endemic in the sub-region. So this is something that we know is doable within the next five years. Now, all this will require at least some more technical technology transfer partnerships. And we think that in five years, we should have at least three. And because we will have an intensive training program, we, we hope that um, this target of having a critical mass of experts for vaccine R&D you know, established in five years, we will come to fruition. Um, we've had some engagement with the European Union and other partners, and they have welcomed this, you know, a strategy with, with, with very positive uh, encouragement. Also, we have colleagues in the UK, uh, the Oxford uh, uh, Institute, uh, the Oxford University, who have also expressed uh, a strong interest in having uh, uh, scientific exchange programs with our scientists to ensure that we do have the critical mass of experts. So already some of the targets that we've put there, the discussions are taking us forward uh, to make sure that these become a reality. And then in the long term, we hope that by 10 years' time, we will have vaccines being produced domestically for our EPI program. There are 13 antigens in our EPI program. We think that at least, you know, a significant number of these, looking at the current technology and what we saw last week in our, from our visit to Brussels at uh, uh, one of the key uh, uh, manufacturing uh, industries, we think that this is, this is possible. And of course, there's also, if you understand the um, license regime, intellectual property agreements and discussions that are going forward, we think that yes, within 10 years, some of our vaccines for our API program should be produced uh, domestically. Of course, the FDA will then, will, um, by 10 years time, be fully capable of regulating the domestic vaccine uh, production whether it's from R&D or to final uh, 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 fill finish uh, products. And then we will have, hopefully, from the research institutions, you know, some vaccine candidates that um, uh, uh, will be re enable us to deal with outbreaks and, and, and pandemics. Uh, I must tell you that uh, technology enables us now to sequence these pathogens quickly. And this information then can go into the experiments that will determine what is a suitable vaccine candidate. So. I know from the work that we do um, in the National Influenza Center that Ghana has been providing uh, um, um, antigens, okay, that go into the WHO Global Influenza Surveillance Response System and actually make a significant contribution into the vaccine selection process for influenza vaccines. So when we say that we will have a programs capable of producing vaccine candidates for outbreaks and pandemics, we know the data, we know the work we are doing, we know that this is indeed possible. Now, all this therefore will result in a self-sustaining ecosystem for, for domestic vaccine manufacturing. So this is not a dream. What I've outlined are various processes that come together in a doable roadmap for vaccine manufacturing in Ghana. And a couple of slides, especially this one, from the data that we have gathered from the interactions and the situation analysis, we think we need about $200 million, you know, as a solid uh, economic base for these activities. This money is not going to come from government. We think that a key strategy will be to find the money from the partnerships that, you know, we are, that are evolving, okay? And the first thing is that um, we will earmark about $20 million for the establishment of the National Vaccine Institute you know, over the next couple of years. A building has already been identified, and there's a lot of work going on to ensure that this vaccine institute will go through cabinet approval, secure parliamentary approval, and then become a reality by the end of this year. And COVID tells us that we, don't, we, we should not waste time. And therefore, I speak with vim and energy, and I hope this will translate into the process that will enable us to push this forward. And with the full backing of His Excellency the President, we should have a national vaccine institute established by the end of this year. What this, can you hold on please? So what this will do is that uh, this budget also covers the private sector. From the estimates that we've got, we think that they will need about $90 million to set up. They will have to find the money and government is prepared to provide the assurances and guarantees for low interest financing to make this uh, possible. For R&D, 
from the proposal that we received, we think that we need about $65 million you know, going forward to set up equipment, to get reagents, to put people in place to ensure that uh, the R&D does go forward. FDA's uh, modest uh, budget is about $5 million, and we think this is, uh, this is small <laughs> uh, 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 for, for the work that we expect the FDA to do, and we will look for more resources as much as we can to ensure that FDA is, is fully resourced to be able to regulate uh, uh, vaccines in, in Ghana. So we will continue to look for the uh, uh, multilateral uh, uh, and bilateral partnerships that will provide, okay, a training, funding, clinical trials that all go towards, you know, licensing intellectual property, you know, agreements that will enable us to have vaccine manufacturing done. So you can see why we, we have a figure of 200 million for the uh, uh, vaccine activities in Ghana. And um, this is a proposed budget, it's an estimate, and we'll have the experts, you know, look at the details, crunch the numbers, and we hope that our colleagues at the GIPC will therefore work with the partners and find us the money so we can move forward with this plan. Now, the next slide shows you the, the, the actual proposed organogram of the National Vaccine Institute. In order to move this forward, we need the energy of the Office of the President. We need the the dedication and we need the power of the office of the president. So initially, the National Vaccine Institute will be under the office of the president. It will have a governing board and it will have a chief executive. And there will be four sections, research and development, manufacturing and industry. And then we will have human capital development and funding and partnerships. We hope that by the end of the stakeholder interactions, um, these uh, four sections or five sections, either they will be expanded or it could be reduced, but we will have a workable structure that will actually enable us to have the Vaccine Institute uh, work very effectively and also harmonize and work closely with the other ministries and departments and agencies uh, that will be uh, involved in making vaccine manufacturing gun. And of course, there will be a secretariat that will provide administrative and financial management uh, for this institute. So to conclude, next slide, please. Um, I think we've mentioned the significant support from, from, from uh, the German government, uh, and um, we will uh, 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 hopefully be concluding feasibility studies on the market analysis and also fill finish technology use in Ghana, and also how it relates to the sub-region. And I must mention that um, we, we are also uh, involved with the ECOWAS uh, Vaccine Tax Force, uh, so we are part of what is happening in the sub-region and uh, Ghana is also a member of the Africa Union CDC uh, uh, vaccine manufacturing uh, process. And we will have a solidarity statement from, from the Africa CDC as part of this uh, uh, interaction at the end. So this shows you that we are aware of what is happening on the continent. And we are making, uh, we are part of the process. And this is not um, um, a standalone, you know, activity. But this is something that is integrated into the sub-regional and continental effort to make vaccines in Africa. We, we are very happy to, to, to hear that um, our local company has gone ahead and is making uh, uh, the necessary you know, arrangements to, to move forward. They've registered as a company, and the other companies are also pushing forward. You've already uh, had the members of the committee described to you by Dr. Nsia Sari, so this is just additional information uh, for you. Um, Honorable Minister for Information, I think I've given uh, quite a good view, and uh, we have the contacts of the uh, chairman and myself, and we are ready to receive written submissions uh, to enrich the process that we began. Thank you very much, uh, moderator. Thank, Thank you very much, um, Professor William Ampofu, Secretary, Presidential Vaccine Committee. I could tell you miss lecturing in the lecture halls, the way you were going slide by slide. You miss lecturing. <laughs> um, but we are happy to have with us on this uh, virtual meeting and this Zoom call scores of uh, stakeholders, some of whom have already indicated that they would like to and make some comments, um, share perspectives, or raise uh, questions. We also have some of our uh, um, partners who are here with us who would uh, reach out to subsequently to um, give us some remarks. So for colleagues who are on the Zoom call, if you intend to um, make a comment, uh, as usual, you'd have to indicate uh, by raising your hand virtually on the platform. The last m meeting I moderated, when I said, you know, you can raise your hand, somebody literally raised his hand uh, on the video. So you have to do that virtually uh, so that we can acknowledge you. Uh, but I, I'm giving indication of a few remarks that have already come through by commentary on the um, virtual platform. So I want to start 
reading through, and I think the rapporteurs will begin capturing some of these uh, perspectives and comments, even as I prepare to go to the Zoom um, screen. Uh, if I can see the names, if you can click for me to see the names of uh, those who've raised their hands virtually, I'll be pleased. So this one is from Dr. Paul Elate. Dr. Paul Elate says, one of the biggest problems for manufacturers in Ghana is access to working capital. Is there a plan to make reasonable interest rate funding specifically available to support entrepreneurs who are considering vaccine manufacturing, as this is capital intensive? Two, the cost per kilowatt hour for industrial use of electricity in Ghana is about five times that of residential use. This is the exact opposite of countries that have grown their industrial base. For example, the cost to the U.S. industry is half that of U.S. residences. And it is downrated with increased use. This is to support continued growth of the manufacturing industry. Electricity tariffs in Ghana do not support industrial growth. Is there not a basic need to look into these issues? It's from Dr. Paul Latte. So he raises two considerations that he, he even if we are not providing answers to here and now, he is of the view that um, the committee that is paving the way for the institute to commence its work should take note of these matters and have them considered as part of the policy responses. Komla Kluche from TV3 has his hand up. Komla, you'd have to switch on your camera so that I, you know, like the FDA will validate every claim of a drug. I want to validate this claim that this is Komla Kluche. So switch on your camera. Um, like to see you, and then I'll give you an opportunity to make your comment or to um, uh, raise your question. So I'm waiting for your camera to go up, and then I would invite you. Th while I'm doing that, I have um, James Holden. James Holden. So come on, switch on your camera. I would like to see you, uh, and then we would um, activate the microphone for you to go ahead. And while we do that, I'm going to take um, a comment sent to us by James Holden. I need to just do that. I'm, uh, I'm just finding it a bit of a difficulty, but I'm trying to do it. Okay, we'll stand by for you. We have time. Don't worry. James Holden sure. says, uh, has the government formalized a roadmap? Um, so I guess the roadmap is what we've shared with you. At least the draft of the roadmap as we have it now is, is what we've shared with you. And this engagement is going to help us enrich it. Is the roadmap available to be shared with this audience? That's what we've just done. But I guess um, the, the, the copy will also be uh, put on our platforms. But you've just been taken through it. Timelines for execution. I'm sure you heard it's in three parts. There's the first two years. Then there's year three to year five, which is the medium term. And then year six to year 10, which is the long term. The costing has also uh, been estimated at this point in time at about uh, $200 million and the various uses spelt out. Uh, you go on to say that the quickest path to local vaccine production is a fill and finish facility. However, a fill and finish facility needs scale economies to be successful, which in terms means being able to capture business from ECOWAS, not just Ghana. What are the government's plans to do this, in particular from Nigeria, which has its own plans to achieve self-sufficiency? Um, then you go on to ask, what is the status of the government's discussion with vaccine intellectual property owners such as Astra to be able to obtain a license for manufacturing and distribution of COVID vaccines? And the final point you raise is, has the government identified where it needs critical support to achieve its objective? I think that has also been responded to in the presentation. So the two new issues, uh, James, that you raise is, uh, how do we intend to um, capture the ECOWAS market at least? especially as some other countries are looking to um, follow our lead. And they may have larger numbers or a larger population, which makes a sense for economies of scale, even if they are operating on their own. And then the other is uh, intellectual property rights and licenses, uh, as at now. Um, Dr. Dan Danaja, that's what I see here. If your camera can go up, I'll be happy to take you now. Komla, your camera is not up, so I'm not able to take you now. So, Dr. Janjawa, if your camera can, can go up. And colleagues on the call, please do switch on your cameras so that we can also validate and 
um, receive your your comments. In the meantime, maybe I'll come, Prof, if there are any remarks that any of um, the committee members want to make. May I encourage colleagues on the virtual call, please switch on your cameras so that we can also validate who we are speaking to uh, since we are on uh, multiple national platforms. Thank you. Uh, thank you, moderator. I think on the uh, ECOWAS um, issue, I did mention that there is an ECOWAS vaccine tax force. And actually, um, uh, from the 6th to the 12th of October, the uh, West African Health Ministers uh, having a meeting in Abidjan, and we'll be, of course, talking about the current efforts to establish uh, uh, vaccine manufacturing in a sub-region, and the policies uh, uh, necessary uh, to encourage this and ensure that, first of all, uh, we do have sufficient COVID-19 vaccines uh, uh, for the uh, populace, and then we'll look at uh, uh, the efforts by uh, various countries. But um, there is a strong discussion at the high levels about um, vaccine manufacturing hubs, and uh, we know that in West Africa, uh, uh, Senegal, Nigeria, and Ghana uh, have put forward you know, uh, plans, and uh, we will work together to ensure that uh, uh, the needs of the sub-region are, are taken uh, into account. Very well. Uh, Prof, let me um, halt you there. Let me go back to the Zoom platform. Kamala Kluche has got his camera. Kamala, good morning. Now we can see you. So let's hear you. Good morning, Coach. Good job. All right. Okay. So I think um, let me first start by saying that some big congratulations to all of us. At least we've come quite far in this. Uh, when the president muted this whole idea, everybody was like, well, it's a good thing and all that. But the question is, I just want to find out, has... Um, have we decided on who is going to do this yes uh, do this yet in terms of the pharmaceutical companies i understand i have seen uh, 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 one the first one as a consortium that is dex that's dan adams and his chemics and then kina pharma and a host of others have we decided on which of them is going to do this yet are there any other questions or comments you have kamala Yes, uh, so that will be informed by it because I am told I pick some indications of uh, some members. For instance, there's this in which I, I, I would probably have to seek clarification from you on it, that one of the members who is, uh, uh, who is a member of the committee that uh, he owns Dan Adams or so, he, his consortium has been given the off Taker agreements just would want to seek the clarity to that. If that is true, uh, what what were the processes that led to Dex being given the off taker agreement? Thank you, uh, Komla. I'll go back to the broader Zoom screen. So, Komla, you can uh, mute yourself now. Um, uh, Doctor Dana Ja, the name doesn't come fully here on the screen. But if you have a question or a comment, I would need you to switch on your camera. We'd like to see you, and then we'll take your question or your comment. While at that, let me just go back to um, the earlier presentation and do some clarification, and then I'll get a response. In the roadmap as presented, the committee is broken down the milestones into three parts. Within the first two years, the committee is looking or is hoping that we would have at least one plant manufacturing vaccines here in Ghana within the first two years. There's also a question about when does the clock start counting, by the way. Um, Kamala's question is that there are suggestions or rumors that uh, already somebody's been selected, and if it is true, uh, have any processes been undertaken prior to this rumored selection. I'd like you to add that to the earlier issues that we were responding to before we took um, some questions. Can we see the larger screen permanently so that if there are any other persons, we'll be quick in seeing them. So, Prof. on the committee, uh, we have a few questions that you can respond to. The earlier ones I asked and then this specific one. Have we done any selections already? Yeah, maybe yeah, I'll attempt to answer this question. Yes, um, what is happening is that if you look at the roadmap, there's a short term, as you rightly said, at least one plant to produce or do a fill and finish. That's the low-hanging fruit of COVID-19 vaccines. Apart from that, there are about 13 different 
pathogens for EPI vaccines. So we Ghana will look up for a lot of uh, plants or a lot of people or industries who want to be part of this system. What DEX is doing is that there's, there's a, a consortium which is formed between Dan Adams, NS Chemist, and Kina Pharma, and they are also working together with another group of consortium of MEC, GLAT, Romalac, and I think Apiget. So they have to go through a system. It is not, maybe I have to repeat here, Ghana government is not building a factory. Ghana government is working this through private sector. And government gives all the enabling environment for the private sector to work. So it's the private sector who is going to look for partners, look for the plant, look for people who can help them, and also the investment drive. Government will give the enabling environment. And government, before you get this going through, by all means, the international partners will ask for who will buy them. And off ticker once, first and foremost, from Ghana. So what Ghana government has done, that anybody, if you bring the letter, we, government will then say a guarantee for off ticker which means that Food and Drugs Authority will be doing its job very well because it's a, a world-class Food and Drugs Authority. So the vaccines which we produce in the country will be up to the standard of WHO. So Ghana government, because you want to have these things in Ghana, will give a guarantee. The off ticker agreement is normally done between the company which will be DEC or any other company which is coming, and government. And that is where the off-taker agreement will be signed. So as we speak now, there's no off-taker agreement. There is a guarantee for off-tick for only vaccines which we produce by any organization. And the way vaccines are, it's even better if there are more companies forming, coming into a consortium because it's a very cost, costly venture. And the risks are very high. As we speak now, I think the consortium in Ghana and then the external consortium of MEC, Romilac, GLAT, and the Apiget are doing feasibility studies in Ghana and also the market demands in the West Africa sub-region. And as Professor Ampofo said, there's also harmonization of African Union to make sure that there are hubs within the sub-regions, the economic zones, who will be making what. And I will repeat here that there are so many vaccines to be produced over the next few years. It's not only COVID vaccines. So any company who is ready to also take part in this it's also can also approach government. And I'm sure if you want to make measles vaccines or um, BCG vaccines, government will look at it and give you the off-taker guarantee to deal with okay. external partners. Thank you. Mr. Dan, I'm sorry I'm struggling with the name. Uh, I mean, I think I'll go for the surname. Tripathi. Yes. Good morning, Andrebal. Good morning. We can see you. So now go ahead. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, Andrebal, my name is Dhananjay Tripathi from Atlantic Life Sciences. And uh, we wanted that, uh, how can we get support from the, from the committee and from the government? Uh, because we have started a plant for the fill and finish at uh, Ningo Pram Pram. And we have reached to a very advanced level of the factory. And uh, we are in talk with some of the company who are currently doing the, some of the vaccines. And we have reached to the stage now where we have to get some kind of commitment from the government because companies are saying that international companies that uh, uh, what kind of a commitment you have from the government before we can give the license, before we can make any agreement. So I wanted, uh, Honorable, that if we can get some kind of commitment from the committee so that we can speak to the international, uh, the bulk supplier, so that they can assist us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Tripathi, uh, for your question. And for those who are uh, watching us on television across the country and those who are joining us online, uh, this is a very transparent process we're going through. Uh, live as it unfolds before your very eyes. I'll let the committee respond. If there are other questions or comments, please give us an indication. Please switch on your camera so that uh, we can do the necessary FDA approval and then take your question. <laughs> Mimi, I'm sure I have your permission for that one. <laughs> okay, so committee, I'll come back to you if anybody wants to uh, respond. 
yes, um, Mr. Tripathi, we are very happy to hear that you have got into an advanced stage. Uh, please submit your formal request for consideration, and then we will take it to government, just like we received from DEK vaccines, and we submitted, and government said, yes, if you are able to make uh, vaccines, we will consider, and then uh, accordingly. So please bring your formal request for the uh, uh, assurance or government guarantee, indicating who your, your partners are for bulk vaccine, and we're very happy to take this forward immediately. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, colleagues, if you are joining us on the Zoom platform, we are able to take your questions or your comments at this point in time. Yeah. While at that, um, I think there are a couple of outstanding issues we haven't responded to. Um, what will be the role of this institute, or even prior to that, this committee on matters of intellectual property rights? Or is it that because it's private sector production-led, IP matters have to be dealt with by the manufacturing companies themselves, or the state is going to get uh, involved? I think we haven't provided an answer to that yet. Uh, uh, okay. the, the, I, I think w w one thing that uh, we should remind members is that the committee is made up of a representative from the Ministry of Trade and Industry. And there is a particular framework for industrialization which has pharmaceuticals as a priority. And some of the companies, especially uh, Atlantic Life Sciences, uh, who we see on the screen, have benefited from support for government for you know, uh, uh, improvement and advancement of uh, manufacturing for pharmaceutical processes in Ghana. So there are already you know, units that are dealing with this issue of intellectual property. And all we have to do is to activate these units for the appropriate discussions to get the rights or licenses for the particular vaccines that these companies want to uh, uh, manufacture, or want to manufacture in Ghana. Thank you. A few more of the uh, issues and comments are being raised um, on the online platforms. Um, this one is from Sam Okanta, who says that Ghana, by this project, is a very fertile field for big pharma considering the interest already shown, some of the names that you are mentioning. Now, his question is, what steps is the committee or the institute going to take to prevent a suppression of local initiatives or homegrown vaccine manufacturing industry by the big multinational companies? Um, a couple more here. David Anson says his greetings to the committee. He says, we should aim to use disposable technology as that will be the most efficient, cheaper, less infrastructure requiring a demand for high throughput and fast changeover for multiple product manufacturing. In this regard, there will be no need for extensive cleaning, validation, while decreasing the incidence of likelihood of contamination from a multi-product site. It's from uh, David Anson, PhD MBA, uh, and who also uh, doubles in corporate finance. I don't know if any one of you took note of the technicalities in that question, or should I go over it again? Uh, uh, we just came back from Brussels, and we did visit, we did visit um, a company called Universals. It was very, very um, appropriate for us to see the current technology that is being used to scale up production of vaccines. So thank you very much for that uh, prompt, and the committee is well aware of this, and we are factoring this into you know, the strategy going forward. Um, local um, vaccine initiatives as we go through this process. And then there's uh, the other about ensuring that this medium and long-term plan that you have survives different political administrations. How are we ring-fencing it against different political administrations? These two, these, these two questions are about governance. So let me take your responses. Yeah, thank you very much. If you look at our roadmap, we have the medium term, which either we, either we like it or not, we have to deal with big pharma because we are just looking at the low hanging fruits of fill and finish. Then moving forward, the medium term within the next five years, there's going to be a lot of technology transfer. In fact, our emphasis is on training technology transfer and also getting the finances and investment to set up our own. Government per se is not going to build factories, as I said. 
all what government is going to do is to use the National Vaccine Institute, which will be looking at technology transfer, will be looking, working closely together with FDA, working together with um, Ghana Investment Promotion uh, uh, Council to make sure that we get the right investment. Looking at trade, in fact, recently we realized that we have to add trade to it. So the NVI will be looking at all these things and making sure that the private sector will be the engine of growth in all these matters. And that we are also encouraging all our pharmaceutical companies who have big footprints in the West Africa sub-region to take this up. And I'm very happy that, for example, Atlantic Life Sciences, DEC, which has come together of three of our most important pharmaceutical companies in the country. There are other companies like Fatorica and the rest who are all coming on board. And there are people who are also it's moving in to join pharmaceutical companies in Ghana life, to work. And be, be, be with that, we are hoping that in 10 years' time, we have a candidate vaccine from our research institutes who are also very keen. Yesterday, I was at KNUST, and they are very keen. KCCR, Noguchi, West, uh, West Africa Center for uh, Cell Biology and Infectious Pathogens are all ready to join in this fight. And I'm very certain in my mind that in the next 10 years' time, if there's any pandemic in, the, in this country or in the world, Ghana will be producing its own candidate vaccine. As Prof already said, that they can isolate. They have some isolates there which they can get the vaccines also ready. And we are doing a lot of clinical trials in the country. So all these things come into, in addition to our FDA, which is moving very fast to maturity level four. So we will be competing with the big pharma in the next 10 years. The next point about what will happen when there is a government change or this, that's the reason why we have the roadmap. We've gone through a lot of stakeholder consultations. We are moving in a direction where this thing, the National Vaccine Institute will be established by act of parliament so that it is done as a country. We, we are going from here, we are going to also meet the uh, Select Committee on Industry, Select Committee of Science, Select Committee on Health, and possibly the whole of uh, parliament in section, the bigger parliament in section. The parliamentary uh, leadership will also be met. And so far, from what we are, the tidbits we are getting from all of them, it will be supported by both sides. And it's going to be something that is going to change the health of, the, of this country, as well as also the industri uh, industrial drive that this country wants to go. And with this, what I see is that we are going to improve on the health of the country. We have uh, security, not only of vaccines, but even biologicals. And then we create jobs and have direct foreign exchange into the country. So we've taken care of all these governance issues, and we want to make sure that before the end of this year, this will be institutionalized, and then we'll, be have, we'll have it out of parliament. Once we have it out of parliament, it's a matter of just tweaking and changing a few things, and I think that's the way that we are going to go. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nsiansari, um, for those responses. I'm going to come back into the auditorium here and give our partners here an opportunity to also share their thoughts and their remarks. The German embassy is here. Um, I'm not very good with German names. So I will pray you to introduce yourself, uh, you know, to all who are here and to the nation that is watching you. And then I invite uh, GIZ, Africa CDC, I'm told, is also here with us. Uh, the GIPC has sent as a rep uh, because of the uh, FDI private sector interest we are looking at. And the WHO has also got a rep here. So uh, let's start with uh, the German embassy. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. So let me start. Can everyone hear me? Yes, thank you very much. Let me start by introducing myself since I was asked to. Uh, it's um, Dorothy Dinklacker. <laughs> But it's no, no need to remember. Thank you very much. I'm head of um, development cooperation with the German embassy. And it is my very pleasure to be here today. Thank you very much for the invitation. Honorable Minister, the chair of the presidential committee, other distinguished members of the committee, and certainly other distinguished stakeholders, Again, I'm very pleased to be here and have this um, opportunity to take part in the discussion. Our governments, the German government and the government of Ghana, 
have long standing, and let me um, highlight, excellent relations, including um, with regards to cooperation and supporting the development agenda of Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, the coronavirus pandemic has brought to the forefront the important need for self-reliance in vaccine needs in Africa, but also in Ghana. Let me state that German cooperation is very much committed to supporting the topic of vaccine manufacturing in Africa as key development initiative. I am very happy to again announce, and I think we've heard it before today, that the German government has dedicated funds to support vaccine production in Ghana. Hence, it is my pleasure to state that during the recent development, uh, during the recent government to government negotiations, which took place um, last week, to be exact, um, additional funding was committed, additional several millions were, committing, were committed to support vaccine manufacturing here in Ghana. Hence, summing up to 5 million euros of this support. German cooperation via our colleagues of um, GISET, and I would like to also thank uh, GISET at this point, um, is very closely or has very closely been working um, with the Presidential Vaccine Manufacturing Committee to realize the establishment of a vaccine manufacturing plant to first fill and finish COVID-19 vaccines, but also other vaccines. And ultimately, as we heard before, build the requisite capacity to be able to develop and manufacture vaccines, but not only for existing disease, such as COVID and others, but again, um, with regards to potential future pandemics. Hence, let me re-emphasize our support to work together to create an enabling, enabling environment for private sector participation. I think this has been highlighted also several times today. Um, and to create jobs and to position, especially Ghana, as a hub for innovation in research and development in biotech, as well as vaccine production. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um Dorothy, thank you for uh, the commitment of the uh, German government for your presence and the thoughts you share with us. Um, I want to go to the GIZ, GIZ as a rep, who is here with us. <laughs> um, and I don't know if you want to make a separate statement or you just associate with, uh, because I think it's the same um, government. So perhaps just a quick word from you. Maybe you would introduce yourself to us and a quick word from you, and then I'll move to the others. Thanks a lot. Uh, honorable Minister for Information, uh, Professor Frimpong Boateng, Presidential Advisor on Health, Secretary, all members of the Vaccine Manufacturing Com uh, Committee. So um, I think from our side, from German Development Corporation, we are already working together with the man Vaccine Manufacturing Committee since quite a while and have developed excellent relations and we are very proud of that. And uh, for us, uh, as uh, um, my colleague from the German Embassy already mentioned, uh, we are coming from the private sector development side. And we are looking at, in this sector, at a development that is not going this normal incremental way, where quite often you have, um, in the industrial nations, huge developments, and then there's a slow development in other countries. We see a lot of potential to really make, make big steps here and uh, to use this effort also to attract um, other investments in the whole uh, health sector and pharmaceutical sector. And doing so, it's also in a context of, uh, of an important topic of health and uh, for social development in Ghana. So we, in this context, um, we are very happy uh, that we can cooperate with you. We are absolutely proud of the commitment of the Ghanaian government uh, to, to this topic. And uh, we see a lot of potential uh, for further development in the health sector, but also in the economic sector. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot um, from GIZ. I'd like to know if uh, the team from the Africa Center for Disease Control is here. And if they are, 
Uh, I'll pass on the microphone to them for a quick comment shortly. They are online. The Africa Center for Disease Control, if you are online. Say again? Nikes in Dembi, if you are ready to give us a quick comment, uh, please indicate, and then I would have your um, uh, microphone unmuted, and if you can switch on your camera as well, I would like to see you from a crowd. While at that, I have a statement of commitment from the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, which I want to read out to everybody who is with us. The GIPC commits that it will partner the committee in attracting and facilitating investment into our vaccine production efforts along the value chain. GIPC has already facilitated engagements and meetings with various agencies, including GIZ, for example, in holding a number of stakeholder workshops to understand and advance Ghana's aspirations to produce vaccines locally. Additionally, investors will be sought for the Vaccine Institute, which will coordinate and facilitate the vaccine value chain from research and development through to production. That's a, a statement of commitment from the Ghana Investment Promotion Center. They are not here with us this morning, but they send us a statement of um, commitment. Nikes Ndembi, if you can hear me from the Africa CDC, we're happy to uh, also hear from you from Accra. Uh, what's the African CDC thinking of all that we are doing here and how are you going to help us out? No, excellent. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I really, we, we are fully supportive of the, the initiative of um, the, the government of uh, Ghana, actually, vaccine manufacturing ecosystem. I have just few slide five to share with you so that you can know what is the continental strategy and uh, how that fit into uh, what you're currently doing. Uh, Professor William Ampopo is already one of uh, the members of the uh, Partnership for Africa Vaccine Manufacturing. Uh, could you please um, enable me to share my screen so that we can, uh, and then I will, I will I'll go back to... Nikesh, I think the camera is switched off from your end. So if you can switch on your camera. Yes, Chair. I, I'm trying to share my screen. But, um, and then, uh... Hello, Chair. I can hear you loud and clear. We're standing by for you. Yeah, we have, uh, I have five slides that I wanted to share with uh, you and then the, the team. Yes, yeah, so go ahead and share so that we can we can see your presentation. It says it says all disabled, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. So maybe the IT you can enable me to share my screen. Just want to give you a kind of a continental perspective, and uh, we're we're really fully supportive of the, the Ghana Initiative for Vaccine Manufacturing. So let me just. My understanding is that it's been activated uh, from here in Accra, so you should be able to share from there. But if not, please speak to it. We will follow. Okay. Good. So um, what I can say is that um, uh, what we do uh, at Africa CDC currently is to develop a continental strategy and uh, what we call also framework for action for vaccine manufacturing. Uh, the good point here is to be able to really have a coordinated action, uh, to be able to um, uh, have a framework for action for the continent. So the vision of the African Union is really to ensure that we have timely access to vaccines to protect public health security, and by establishing a sustainable vaccine development and manufacturing ecosystem. Ghana is already part of that by this uh, launch of this stakeholders meeting. So the key point here, we do import 99% of our vaccines, only 1% produced locally. I think if Ghana actually uh, stick to the plan and implementation of, the, uh, of what has been presented today, that would enable us to meet our aspiration by 2040, which is to provide or to produce at least 60% of the vaccines on the continent. And this, have, uh, we have, uh, you have a strong uh, political uh, leverage from the African Union for that, we can facilitate. Uh, we've been able to even, uh, uh, been able to interact with some of the vaccine manufacturers in terms of IP transfer. We just returned from South Africa for the SA mRNA tech transfer training hubs. Uh, we wish one of those would be in West Africa, uh, more likely in Ghana, with the maturity level three that we have achieved. The journey is really long, as I've said. It's a long-term journey, uh, and Professor Ampofo really unpack it in terms of the short, medium, and long term. I'm not going to that, but the, uh, by 2040, that's our target. 60% of the vaccines should be able to be produced locally. So what we have been able to achieve is we establish what we call the PAVM, the Partnership for Africa Vaccine Manufacturing, where all the 55 member states have been invited. 
and with a, an agenda setting and coordinating role from the African Union. There are six regulatory uh, uh, work streams, uh, six uh, work streams, one of the regulatory strengthening, where we have your uh, the, the head of your NRA uh, sitting into that regulatory. The market design and demand intelligence is very important that we start thinking beyond uh, Ghana in terms of production and also uh, in terms of um, uh, how we can get beyond, beyond the local market. The access to finance, I'm pleased to inform you that we have secured uh, money from Team Europe, over 1.3 million euro. We'd like to see what is your budget. I've seen that. We would like to discuss and engage the government. We also have funding from the MasterCard Foundation, over 1.3 billion to support other components and also vaccine manufacturing. So please, uh, it's an appeal for the government to reach out to the AU so that we can work collectively to meet the Ghana aspiration of vaccine manufacturing. There's also a component on technology and IP transfer. I mentioned that already. And then the research and development, uh, 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 Dr. Professor Ampofo sits into that uh, work soon. Uh, the infrastructure and development. As you can see, we're inclusive. We include all member states to be sure that they achieve their goal. So I, I'm not going to take too long just to inform you that there are several other front runners in terms of vaccine manufacturing. So as you can think collectively uh, as a continent, we have Egypt, Ethiopia, Senegal, South Africa, Tunisia, Algeria, and Ghana, Morocco, Nigeria, Rwanda, Uganda, Angola, Botswana, Kenya, Tanzania, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire. I'm providing that from the African Union so that you're aware in terms of the market landscape and design. And among those countries, only Ghana and Tanzania have achieved maturity level three. I think you understand why also there's a strong interest from the African Union to work closely with Ghana. I think uh, having said that, um, I, I'm gonna pause here and then uh, back to you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Nikesh. And um, you made it snappy and straightforward. And you talk about Ghana's maturity level three and as Professor Ampofu mentions, we are hoping to even move to level four uh, in the shortest possible time, which would also give us a robust framework within which we can assess and examine all the work that is being done and support uh, all of these uh, manufacturers. And that will take me later to the FDA boss herself uh, to tell us what the FDA thinks about what is an acknowledgement of the work they are doing, but at the same time, what is also a challenge for the FDA to um, rise up to that level. So Mimi, I'll come to you. I just want to go to the WHO country office. Uh, Dr. Francis Casolo is standing by. Uh, I'm told he's going to join us on uh, the Zoom platform with their remarks of the World Health Organization. Um, Francis, there you are. Ah, you're in your car, but we can hear you and we can see you as well. Yeah, yeah thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and uh, dear colleagues. Yes, I'm I'm actually in uh, Kumasi, but then uh, this being a very important uh, occasion in terms of vaccine manufacturing, I thought I should join in. Um, I would like, first of all, on behalf of the World Health Organization, to congratulate the uh, Ghana government and indeed His Excellency President, Mr. Nana Kufuado, for moving towards setting up the vaccine manufacturing capacity at the time that the world is battling with the COVID pandemic. The COVID pandemic, as we all know, has disrupted health systems and ravaged uh, economies ex and ex also exposed the vulnerability of countries. Ghana and many countries have experienced several COVID waves. And it's now when, rather than if, we're going to have the next uh, wave. It is clear that the public health measures that are being implemented in Ghana and globally need to be supplemented with greater access and availability of COVID-19 vaccines if we are to realistically control this pandemic. Unfortunately, limited supplies of vaccines, especially in Africa, has been a major challenge. And noting that less than 2% of our targeted population on our continent have received at least one dose of the vaccine. Hello? We can hear you, Francis. Go ahead. Okay. Gun, um, we take note of the work of the committee appointed by His Excellency and are pleased that a 10 year roadmap has been developed. WHO is happy to, uh, to support a team of, um, of experts who put together the national vaccine policy. And pivotal to the establishment of the vaccine manufacturing in Ghana 
is the role of the National Regulatory Authority, the Food and Drugs uh, Authority. Uh, WHO plans to support the further strengthening of the regulatory system, which is already at maturity level three, as we, as we have heard. WHO would like to call on for the strengthening of collaboration amongst governments, academia, and the research institution, including, of course, the private sector. By working together, we can not only improve access to vaccines, but also save Ghanaian lives. In conclusion, WHO would like to pledge its continued support and commitment to ensuring that Ghana achieves a strong and resilient health system that meets the health needs of all people living within its borders, especially the poor and the vulnerable. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Francis Kalusolo, who is country rep, WHO Ghana, and all the best in uh, Kumasi. They have some lovely cuisines there, so enjoy it while you are out Thank there you. in um, Kumasi. I'm going to come back here to the auditorium. Um, and I want to quickly go to Deliz Mimidakon, who is the chief executive of the Food and Drugs Authority. Uh, level three maturity on the roadmap to level four, which would uh, give us a strong backbone in this um, exercise. But it's also a challenge to the FDA as well. How is the FDA receiving this? And how are you contemplating meeting this challenge? Thank you very much. Um, I think I'll use something else. Okay, so, okay, so um, just to let you know that regulation is actually involved in nearly every aspect of vaccine uh, manufacture. So from the point where you develop the vaccine, the way you design the vaccine, the way you do the clinical trials, um, the trial has to be approved and the trial has to be monitored or by the regulator. Then when you get to manufacture, the vaccine has to be manufactured according to certain practices, what we call good manufacturing practices. Once you finish manufacturing, uh, you also have to release the vaccine, and all that is also done by the regulatory agency. Um, even if you do fill and finish, even the bulk has to be licensed by the agency after um, when it comes in. Then when you finish manufacturing, when you are marketing, the way you store the vaccine in, 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 a, in a cold chain is also regulated and even we monitor the quality of the vaccine um, once you start marketing. Then you then distribute and deploy the vaccine. And during that time, the FDA has to ensure that the safety of the vaccine is monitored in, in what we call a, a pharmacovigilance, where we look at the adverse events only in immunization. So as you can see, there's a huge task for the regulatory authority in the area of vaccine manufacture. But we are not starting from scratch. And as everyone has said um, in, in this meeting, the FDA is the maturity level three function. That means it is well stable, a well-stable agency in all its regulatory functions, but one. And in that one is a safety monitoring where we are already maturity level four. And this is the highest level that any regulatory authority can attain in, um, in its regulatory practice. So we would, um, Ghana is currently a vaccine procuring country. And therefore, we, do not, we are not required to do what you call lot release. Lot release is when every batch of vaccine that is, is released from the factory has to be released by the manufacturer as well as the regulatory agency. And currently, because we do not do vaccine manufacture, it is a function that we have not had to do. But as soon as we start doing that, we have to reach the level where we can actually do lot release for every batch of vaccine. So that is where we would require some strengthening. Our laboratory is, is currently... Um, ISO 17025 2017 accredited, and we are the largest scope in the whole of Africa. So it, it is a challenge to us, but it's not one that we cannot um, surmount. And we are well poised to ensure that we have an, what we call an institutional development plan that will ensure that in the next year or two, we will reach maturity level four in all our functions, which means that we'll be as advanced as uh, regulators like the US FDA the UK MHRA and, and any other, comparable to any other in the world. And um, our, our um, quality um, control laboratory is also at the final stages of WHO um, um, certification or accreditation and um, pre-qualification, should I say. And hopefully, if it wasn't for COVID, we would have had that done by now. We're hoping that in the first quarter of next year, we'll have that um, WHO pre-qualification for our laboratory. So... With um, 
a bit of a push. We should, we will get there. I'm not saying we should be, but we will get there to ensure that we can give the necessary support to vaccine manufacture in Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I believe I have the permission of uh, my boss, uh, the president, to commit that that push will be given the Food and Drugs Authority so that you also step up to maturity level four because it will be a major pace setter uh, on the continent and it will help all these efforts that we are embarking upon. Uh, Professor Frimpong Boating is the chair of this committee. Uh, he joined us virtually in the beginning. I want to go back to him on the Zoom screen um, as he's followed all our conversations uh, for his closing remarks and then we'll wrap up. Prof. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I really enjoyed the interaction this morning. And um, I want to thank our partners from the German Embassy, from VIZ, and uh, African CDC. I want to particularly uh, draw Professor Ampovo's attention to what the um, colleague from African CDC said, uh, talking about funds from MasterCard and the AU and so on. So you are a man on the spot. Uh, just follow up on those uh, issues. And let's see what the African CDC uh, and MasterCard can help, uh, can help in this area. Um, I also want to commend our dynamic FDA, and I believe that pretty soon we'll be at level four so that they can accompany us on this journey uh, towards vaccine manufacture. Uh, I also thank uh, the others for very interesting questions that came. Uh, Kumla Kruche, for example, uh, asked questions about how um, DK, somebody was selected to do COVID. I mean, they went through a very transparent process. Uh, every company presented um, this plan. And uh, so whoever was uh, selected to do uh, what they're supposed to do was done transparently. For example, Atlantic Life Sciences uh, indicated that they'll be producing anti-snake serum uh, by September this year. Uh, yeah, September is, will end today. I hope that they will be able to uh, keep their way. Uh, and so uh, I believe that this has been a transparent issue. I want to take a question that Dr. Okanta, uh, uh, Dr. Okanta asked, but was not adequately answered. You know, um, talking about big pharma and big pharma uh, swallowing what, uh, what you are trying to do here. Dr. Okanta is a CSIR. I know that CSIR, they have the capacity to do some vaccines. And maybe that's why he is uh, very apprehensive on that area. But I can assure him that looking at our plan, the short term, medium term, and long term plan, we are going to tackle all aspects of vaccine production, as for example said, from R&D to fair and finish, and also deployment of the vaccines. And so this will be led by the Ghanaian private sector and powered by Ghanaian research institutions. As indicated, for now, we have a uh, Legon represented by Noguchi and Wagbip, KCCR and the institutions in Kumasi, CSIR, Ghana. And uh, we have also received from, uh, received uh, from, um, proposals from uh, the whole university. Uh, so gradually we are building a very strong case for our very strong team for, from, for r and And when we have our um, FDA in the pro position, then we'll be really on the path towards uh, vaccine manufacture. And there may be a lot of countries in Africa who are doing this. We wish, let's wish ourselves well. Uh, but Ghana, we are there, and I think that with the leadership that we are having from the, uh, from the uh, president, we'll, we'll get there very soon. So, uh, Minister for Information, thank you very much for moderating the uh, session, and I thank my colleagues, um, for example, for, and Siansari, uh, Mimi. But let me also mention that we have others listening in, Ambassador Senna, uh, our ambassador in Brussels, um, he, she hosted us a few days back and she is listening in and probably will also take some notes uh, to complement what she's doing in, in uh, Brussels. Uh, our colleague, 
I know if you are some of Dr. Samoba is also listening in, and I hope that um, this interaction will enrich our roadmap as we move on towards vaccine manufacturing. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Prof, thank you very much um, for your closing remarks as well. Uh, to our colleagues from the World Health Organization, the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, the Africa Center for Disease Control, uh, GIZ, the German Embassy, to members of the committee, we are very grateful that uh, you've made time uh, to be with us. To Ghana Television that has carried us live across the country, you always do a human's job. We're grateful to you. Uh, you know, since COVID started, uh, the team at the Ministry of Information has had the opportunity to uh, be facilitating a lot of these updates and conversations. And uh, Prof, by the time it's all over, you probably have to give us a certificate in epidemiology or pandemic management or something. But the team from Information Ministry is always happy uh, to be at your service, and uh, we're grateful uh, for the opportunity to be uh, with you. Uh, we are finishing this about 15 minutes ahead of schedule. Our prayer is that we finish this local vaccine production program ahead of schedule. Thank you. Wish you all the best. <laughs>